Yeah. It, basically, there's two ways that you can learn about art. The first way is that you can, you find an artist that you like and you say, how do you do that? And you go and you learn under them and you learn how they do what they do. Um, and the other way to learn about art is you actually learn the skills that are needed to do certain things. So there is skill needed to draw and there's skill needed to paint. And you need to know something about the paints and about the brushes and about this and that. And then when you go to art school, it's the latter, you're learning skills. And then you may have somebody that you go and you study under, under especially because you really like them, because you wanna learn from them particularly, but mainly you're, 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 you're learning about the skills so that you can get your, and find your own route or route. And um, so what was happening at Pacific Art League is that over the years, they had many lovely, wonderful artists um, who taught there and they had a following. And so when you wanted to, um, you know, the classes would say open to new people, but what would happen, and we found this out by talking to them, uh, people would go to those classes and they'd, they'd feel so upset because they couldn't, they, they weren't anywhere close to who was, you know, they, they, they looked at what other people were doing, I'm never gonna be doing that. And they felt embarrassed and they just dropped out. So, because they were intimidated um, because it wasn't really angled at them and they sort of had to catch up and the teacher would give them a bit of time as much as they could. So we decided to, um, to start a beginner series literally aimed at beginners. And there's nothing wrong with beginning to paint and draw in late life. Uh, Van Gogh did all of his work in the last four years of his life. Um, um, many wonderful, amazing painters started late life. Gauguin started when he was, um, you know, he was a banker. Um, um, uh, Kandinsky was a lawyer, never done art. So there's nothing, it, it's a great thing to start late in life, no, no problem with that. But there, um, what, what has happened many times, those of us who grew up with it when we were kids, um, you know, like myself from age, however, like two, was, I just was always drawing. And so I did a lot of basic things. It just became natural to me. And if you don't learn those things, um, then you are going to have trouble. And um, it's very interesting because Mr. David Hockney, who's a great current artist, one of my, um, the people I, I follow the most, I love him, said that drawing which is the most basic beginning class that you could do, um, actually fell out of style, teaching drawing fell out of style in um, colleges um, about 40 years ago, uh, which was when actually, when I was going to class or even earlier, and um, to art college, and it became unpopular and the people no longer learn to draw. And if you don't learn to draw, then you really kind of, shortchanging yourself and trying to run before you can walk. So um, these be beginning classes we began and we, it, would, it was so amazingly wonderful. Uh, Cheryl uh, was one of my very first students um, in drawing. And so now, um, uh, you know, and it works. So I'm gonna have Cheryl say a few words, if you will, Cheryl, I hope you've got some coffee and tell people your experience because you started out um, you know, completely new to it. And now you're, you know, uh, and like really becoming an experienced artist with who I'm, I'm still working with actually as a painter. So she came to my beginning, um, all of my beginning, different beginning classes. So we started beginning classes in different subjects and we offer them from teachers who love to teach new people. So I am um, starting again, like a, during the summer, I only did digital because it was easier for me. But um, I miss teaching drawing because that's what I do and I miss teaching painting. So I'll be starting a beginning acrylics and a beginning drawing class. Um, and then we have Robin, we have uh, Robin, who's um, very experienced, teaches beginning watercolor. Um, there's all kinds of different beginning classes and you just look at beginning. And, um, 
and you know you you get started there so that's the kind of history of how we began and so now we have you know a little bit of a springboard where we can bring you in uh some people have done the class more than once because they needed to um, and then after that you're ready to go to more advanced classes so we now i'm you know getting a little bit more curriculum conscious in terms of designing a curriculum so that we can bring a person from nothing up the ladder so to speak so that's basically what they're all about and my class is six weeks long um say for, for drawing and i take you through very very beginning steps like i i don't um expect i don't take you have to when you're teaching beginners you can't take anything for granted you um things that are just natural to you because you've been at it for so long like for example how to hold a pencil or the fact that not all pencils are the same all of these little things or how to draw a straight line or how to draw a circle these are basics you know that's you know, like your handwriting and you can't assume that anybody knows how to do that so i try to do my classes so that each class has an exercise that a person can do during it so it's not all just technical or skill so you all get to do a drawing each week and they're on a, a you know a series of steps so you can be really proud of yourself and gain your self-confidence and um you know and and go on a step-by-step -step process where you just go from um you know you take uh, small steps um i don't expect you to sit down and uh, draw a hand right off the bat you know like i don't expect that so it's just like teaching anything teaching to cook you have to teach the basic things first so caroline I, we were, I remember one of your first or maybe your second like beginner drawing classes i remember walking in the first day and you had a full class there must have been 18 students in there and i remember seeing the first day uh you know you were teaching them how to draw straight lines with their eyes open with their eyes closed and i remember seeing these i was like oh man caroline has her work cut out you know this <laughs> you know you were teaching how to hold pencils like and I, then I remember, I think maybe eight weeks later when the class was over, or five weeks later. Unbelievable. I, 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 I remember walking in and be like, Caroline, is this, oh, is this your more advanced class? And you said, no, these are the beginners. And I couldn't believe it. I know. No it was, one. It was, it, was, it, was, it was shocking. It was shocking. Because they were drawing these like, um, I think they were doing like, a, like an exercise on skulls. That's and they right. were so perfectly um, like shaded in okay. and detail nobody everyone gets to do it everyone gets to, it's a skill like a lot of things in art are skills there's a difference between skill and creativity so your skill has to be at a point where you can create the the um the execute what you want to say so you know it's not all skill and it's not all creativity there's got to be a balance and so that's why people get frustrated because they just don't have the skill yet so um and not because they're bad and i one for one found one for one never had that where a person thinks that they can't draw and they say to me i can't draw i mean and i always say who told you that what happened and it's 100 percent back in school they either had somebody in the class who was one of these kids who was just kind of super talented and could copy anything exactly and uh the teacher held them up as saying oh my god look how brilliant johnny is and you go i'm not going to show mine there's no way i'm going to let anybody see what i'm doing you know or the teacher was in some way disparaging i'm sorry but hate to say with my fellow teachers but there are arts um, teachers that shouldn't be allowed in an art class and um, I've you know, seen the results of that, even with children, where they had a teacher that said, asked them, why did you bother showing up? And um, age five, which is a bit silly. Um, so, you know, there's all manner of ways in which people, and it, it, for some right reason, it hangs around. Like, I remember the teacher that made me feel like um, a piece of garbage on the floor. You'll never forget it. So, um, you know, these things have impact. And um, so getting you through that stage, getting you to take your self-critic and leave them outside the front door and say, no, you're not invited. 
Um, I, and you know? again, I think going back to like, I remember that first class, you know, the students were all kind of hunched over a little, not hunched over, but you know, like, oh, like kind of like meek or, or a little bit embarrassed. And again, like walking into the, the, the last class, everybody was just like, you know, proud chested, like <laughs> smiling ear to ear and excited to do whether another drawing class or another painting class. And it's incredible to see, you know, the, the people that, that started who are now um, in more in advanced classes and painting, um, whether it's watercolor, acrylics, and gouache, um, and seeing what was unlocked just by unlocking those basic skills. Um, yeah, so I'd like to open this up a little yeah. bit now and um, answer questions. And first of all, I would like Cheryl, if you're there, Cheryl, if you could, um, if you could have um, spotlight Cheryl and then let her have a little chat. Yeah, Cheryl, tell us about your experience because you started out with me. Well, I, I did, I, I had, when I retired, I wanted to paint because my girlfriend painted. But I mean, the seventh grade was when I <laughs> quit taking art in school because I was more of a numbers person. But your, your drawing class was just fantastic. I mean, something happened in that class where I changed how I saw what was possible. I had taken some other classes before I started taking classes with you at, at PAL, but I always felt like there was something wrong with me and I just couldn't do it, like you were just describing. I mean, I always, I really felt bad and I felt like I put a lot of effort into it, but didn't get anywhere. And when I started taking the classes from you, you taught us how to approach it, how to look at it, how, to, what are the different kinds of, of strokes of your pencil, of your brush, of how to mix colors, how to approach color harmonies, and on and on, reinforcing it. Do you remember, you remember that first painting you did um, of, um, yeah, Yosemite? Uh-huh. <laughs> so good. And we put it on the PAL website to promote the um, intro oh, to acrylic. That, yeah, I still love that picture. And that's the thing that happened in your classes. In the drawing class, it was the charcoal drawing of the eagle. Yeah. In the acrylics class, it was the that one. And then the I, I took your iPad beginning all through um, the other classes. What a fantastic tool that could be and the range of things you could do with it. So I don't know. At any rate, I felt like you have opened up doors and given me a choice and given me a way to believe in myself. And it's fantastic, thank you. Well, you're, you're a total darling. And um, I would also like to invite Maria to say a, a word if you feel like it, Maria. Um, because actually I met you, you're already um, a born artist, but I met you drawing at um, Filoli. We yes. did a beginning, and then you've done different beginning classes with me, but although you, as you can see from her wall, uh, <laughs> already good. But so even if you've got some experience, getting those fundamentals helps, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And and actually, I think uh, I've been painting for a, a while, but what I noticed is that I didn't have was the fundamental color mixing or drawing. And uh, I took your Filoli two-day workshop, and I was really impressed that I can actually draw <laughs> something that uh that i was proud of and uh um it was only two days but i was so excited after after that class that uh, i'm really interested in learning more drawing and uh i've been taking i've taken your monet workshop and your van gogh uh, but also all your ipads uh, beginner intermediate and now the studio and uh I'm also amazed at how much I've learned. And what I really like about your teaching style is that um, you start very simple and you built on it. And the way you teach, um, it really reinforces later on when I'm working on something, um, on a painting on my own, on my iPad. And I remember, oh, we learned this step. And now I know how to use it. And uh, I still have more to learn, but it's uh, it's been really great, and I really love the way you teach. So well, I'm signing you. up for more thank classes. You. Thank you for contributing and helping. 
Um, that's awesome. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, so um, I want to like to open it up for any questions that people have or experiences that you've had that you'd like to share. How about you, John? Are you already learning or taking classes or anybody want to sort of add anything to, to my chit chat here? No? Oh, um, I'm... Mm. I've taken some painting classes with Steve Curl, watercolor oh, yeah. classes. I'm an architect. I've seen you in there. What's that? I said, I think I've seen you in there. You're an architect? Yes. And um, did I learned drawing and sketching in Cal Poly many, many years ago. I find that the best thing for me is to keep at it. Mm -hmm. I get rusty. And then I, you know, I, I start going out and doing some sketches. The AA has a little sketching Saturday and I find that the more you got to retrain your eye all the time absolutely it's, you have to keep showing up yeah um, I, I totally agree with you and one of the things that I have all my students do is start a sketchbook and show up and like even if they don't know really what to paint um, I've got you know made a lot of studies of different artists as well. I have a huge love of art history. So I love to also tie in things that I'm teaching you um, to different, um, you know, artistic movements, um, when that was discovered, what happened, how, to, you know, and also to debunk certain ideas, you know, that people get very stuck. And the other thing I like to do is help you break out a little bit as an artist, you know, like you tend to get into a rut. So I like to, on my lessons, I, you know, you never, you never know quite what I'm going to do. Right, Cheryl? <laughs> That's right. Right. And right, Maria, like I'm likely to just totally change, you know, I'll have you do something very detailed and then suddenly turn it around and then you have to do something, um, you know, with your eyes closed. And, um, just to kind of get you um, so that you can sort of break out of, you can also use these classes as a way to break out of a habit you've got or way you've got. But um, I really enjoy the process of teaching new people. It's my favorite. Most of my classes are beginning. Um, and then, but then I have, I've developed other ones because guys, I can't get rid of you guys. <laughs> Not that I care. You're part of my life, but I have developed the classes just so I can keep people with me. But generally speaking, I kind of look at myself more as being, um, you know, um, teaching uh, rule. Like Picasso said, know the rules like a pro, uh, then break them like an artist. You have to know the rules. If you don't know the rules, you're very stuck in terms of what you can accomplish. And you can break the rules as he did frequently and which all, you know, most great artists have broken many rules of, of the ice. You know, he said, you know, you should do this and you should do that. And, and I'm a believer in that. And I, I hate rules. And, um, but I you need to know them first. So you need to know about this and know about that and know different developments and discoveries and how to do certain things and certain you know, like your tools and how to take care of them and what acrylic paint is and how to correctly use it. And, um, you know, so that's like try to kind of keep all the classes within that format so that you're all, and then I also, the other thing I do, which I think is kind of useful is that I write everything down and give you a, like a little uh, written write up, especially when you're doing it online, that you get a, a lesson following the lesson, you get it in writing so you can print it off and do it again because otherwise, you know, I don't want you taking notes, I want you actually following along. So um, I found that to be um, a very useful thing for people, then they can sort of track, you know, their progress and they can go back over a certain um, exercises and do them again. Any any other question, Ali? How was that? Did I do a good enough job here? That's great. I mean, I also like what I like to see is kind of like your baby birds flying the nest after they've taken your class. Yeah, it's incredible to see them to to be in more you know again advanced classes. And I love Absolutely. how 
Well, and I, I like that you, you kind of, you see the person's style or maybe their, um, their personality. And I think you do a great job of recommending certain teachers, right? Because I mean, every teacher is different and- Absolutely. Yeah, so I think that's really nice. Yeah, I mean, certain like, for example, John, I don't do watercolor. I'm not a watercolor artist. It's not my, my, my thing. So, you know, if a person like that's how they develop, I did a class, um, for example, for people interested in learning to paint. And I asked myself, if I was learning to paint and I'd never painted before, how would I know what kind of paint to use? And I had had so many students that would tell me, oh, I've got a garage full of acrylic paint. You know, I just, it wasn't my thing. I ended up doing watercolor. So I did a class where you got to experience each of the different types of mediums so that you could actually test each one and see which one kind of appealed to you. You didn't have a whole bunch of outlay. That's not so easily done online, but once we open again, it's, it's just a beginner's guide so that you can experience different mediums and then know which one you belong in and then you can go on that route. So I like to do that as well. And when I spot that somebody definitely is going in a route, I can direct them towards the teacher that's gonna develop that particular um, area of interest. But in art in England, where I was raised, um, the first time, the first year is called the foundation. And you do your foundation art training at your local college. And, um, that's where they introduce you to everything. You know, you do a little bit of this, a little bit of printmaking, a bit of drawing, different types of drawing, different types of this. And then you know where you want to specialize. And then the final three years of your, of your degree is then specializing in, a spe in a, an art college that specializes in what you want to do. So I ended up going to a, one of the main painting schools in England. Um, and... Um, you know, that's where I ended up. And now you also do digital, so you never stop learning. Well, I did digital um, and I, I don't really, I, I, it's funny, um, it's Dave Hockney again said, isn't it weird that iPhone got us back to drawing? But it really did um, because these phones and devices had these apps that allowed you to draw, people got back into drawing. And um, I got back into drawing 2012 when my son gave me an iPad and I went totally helter skelter into it and that's all I did for six years and um, um, I had many exhibitions and then at one point I was gonna I'm, you know I'm done I want to go back and it actually got me back to my love of drawing um, and then I went to gouache I went to acrylic painting and now I'm back to oil which is what I do and uh, now I'm working with oils, but I, but I use my iPad all the time to work out artistic problems. And I'm, of course, I I'm, I draw. I've got I've got so many sketchbooks. It's just like ridiculous. Like I have a you know box of sketch, like always sketching, always drawing. I I uh, I've also I mean I've noticed as someone who you know who. who I've known you for several years now. I, I, I've enjoyed seeing your art just change now that I see you like all your oil paintings now. And it's um, I'm not saying it's better, but it's different. There's a whole, no, like, you know, it's, it, it, they're really beautiful. And it, it, it's, it, I, I don't know if it's from, you know, playing with digital. Digital, to, um, what uh, digital lets you do is it lets you go in a lot of different directions very rapidly. Um, as uh, without digital, if you're using traditional materials, they're expensive and they're bulky. So you're very, um, it's very difficult to, you, know, you may want to experiment with uh, collage or you may want to experiment with this or that, but you know, um, or you may want to experiment down an, a, a particular route of an artist that you love. But you know, um, you're limited. You've you've got you know, if you've got a huge studio and and the other thing is that probably the beginning of what you're going to do is going to suck. And you know, um, what do you do with it? Like, so what's great about iPad is that you can do all that, and it just is in the Ethernet. You can print it if you want, or you can just keep it, or you can just check it. So what it allowed me to do is go down lots of different artistic routes, and which I did do many artistic routes like you know and, and explore 
very rapidly different areas that I'd always been fascinated in. Um, prior to doing this, I was painting sets in, in, in Hollywood, like artists very often end up doing things like painting faux painting, painting sets, because that's what, you know, you can do, um, and art directing and designing. Um, so when I came back to just straight painting, I, there was so much I wanted to do and so many artists I loved and I wanted to explore down these different avenues and the iPad let me do that like really quickly. There was, it's just so prolific. So I managed to kind of educate my, just kind of go down all these different routes until I knew where I was and knew where I wanted to go. And then I came back to my drawing and painting and, and I still use my iPad and still do things, some things on it, but not, you know, it's not, not my main medium, but I teach it because uh, I love, enjoy empowering people. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, I guess if there's any other questions you can, you want to ask now, anyone? Otherwise we, uh, we, uh, I, Caroline, your email is what? Caroline Mustard. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. So if anyone yeah. has questions directly for her, you can email her. Yeah, so please, and you can go to my website and see my work at uh, Caroline Mustard um, 04. This is my email at gmail.com. Um, that's my email. And then this is my, my website. Be a good idea if I spelt it right. And that's my personal work. It's not totally up to date, unfortunately. It doesn't really have any of my oil paintings. Yeah, so the email is Caroline Mustard I need, I need to it. at Gmail. And the website is www.carolinemustard.com. Yeah, so look at my work. And that reminds me, I definitely have got to update it. And um, I'm also just about to publish a book called The Joy of Drawing which will go along with my beginning classes. So this is, this is something which I'm very excited about. It should be available next month. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, that's the story. That's awesome. It's 12 o'clock. It's time for lunch. Thanks for joining. Please visit our website. Check out the classes. The beginner classes are under beginner art series and everything else is by medium. So thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Thanks Bye. so much for joining. Bye, Bye guys. Take care. Thank you.